giant radioactive roaches, super mutants, Preston Garvey. There are many terrible consequences to nuclear war in the Fallout universe, but it's not all bad. If you were lucky enough to not be vaporized instantaneously, you might instead turn into something else, a nigh-immortal, radiation-eating, skin-not-having zombie, a ghoul. Is there a way for radiation to save you from the apocalypse? What is the science of ghoulification? First of all, what do we know about Fallout's ghouls? Well, we know that canonically they were hit with such a high dose of radiation that counterintuitively they didn't die. Their lifespans were extended, they can now feed off radiation, and all their skin fell off. At first, Vats, does any of this make any sense? Well, yeah, kinda. Let's begin with why my man Goggins here looks so gross. Smooth skin. It's invisible and sometimes complex, but what radiation does to human tissue is actually pretty simple. Whether the radiation is photons of light or particles, they smack into the atoms and molecules of the body with enough energy to mess them up, to rip pieces from them and ionize them. This therefore changes how the atoms and molecules interact, which can damage the microscopic machinery of the cell. From here, the cell either repairs the damage or stays mutated, or dies if the cell hasn't already. And unfortunately, we know that radiation-initiated cell death can lead to massive skin loss that does look very ghoulish. So, a fallout ghoul might look correct, but of course, your skin is your first line of defense against the many pathogens on this planet that want to put you down. I'd expect any normal human with a 100% open wound to die 100% of the time. But if we're being lenient with the fiction here, there might be a way for radiation to solve that problem too. Can it solve why Starfield is so boring? Oh, uh, I couldn't tell you, Arya. I, I don't have it installed. Today's video is sponsored by Copilot. Yeah, make sure to get me another protein shake. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Gamers, everyone seemingly wants to get in shape, but no one knows how to do so. We just know from health and psychology research that you need numbers, plans, accountability, someone to talk to 24 seven that will never actually call you on the phone. Stop doing that. Ew. That's why I've been thrilled with today's sponsor, Copilot. Copilot is a personal fitness service that combines the personalization and accountability of a human expert with the flexibility of technology. Your virtual coach customizes guided workouts to your goals, schedules, and injuries. Every program is tailored to you and continuously adapted. With Copilot, you work out anytime, anywhere. My personal coach, Rod, adjusts my workout after every session, is always available via chat in the app, keeps me consistent, and laughed when I called myself Chris Hemsworthless. So I guess he's cool. Everything is planned out, timed down to the second, crafted with the equipment I have in mind, and synced with my Apple Watch so that I don't have to constantly check my phone. I've been using Copilot for the last two months straight, and I feel fitter than I've felt in a long time. Go to this URL or to the link down in the description for 14 days free of personalized fitness on me. Look, I honestly love this service. They asked me, just so you know, to do just two workouts to get a feeling for the app. I've done 17 now. Even Arya does it now, and she's a professional personal trainer. Don't fly your fitness flight alone, gamers. Get a co-pilot on me for free for 14 days. It's an app. You're welcome. Co-pilot. The bad thing about radiation is that it can kill living cells. The good thing about radiation is that it can kill living cells. Humans take advantage of this fact in all sorts of ways. We sterilize spacecraft before they go to other planets. We kill pathogens on food with radiation. We sterilize medical devices. And we've saved millions of lives by killing cancer cells in a more selective way. So, if fallout ghouls are constantly putting out enough radiation to kill viruses and bacteria around them, seems plausible that some do, then maybe that's how they survive having a 100% full body open wound. And their lifespans are longer than we expect? 
I don't know, to be honest, it's not the best answer in Fallout. What is the best answer? Oh, it's that Curie is the best companion. You really have a thing for robots, huh? No, I don't have a thing for robots. It's, it's the accent and the pixie cut and the fact that she's a robot. Damn! The world's worst nuclear disasters didn't just cause catastrophe. They caused controversy. Even today, the actual health effects of the low-level ionizing radiation they left behind are hotly debated. The big reason why is that radiation is already everywhere. Nuclear radiation didn't start when Oppenheimer split the atom. Radioactive atoms formed during the lives and deaths of stars were incorporated into the Earth's formation just like all the other elements. There's uranium ore in the ground tritium in the atmosphere and the ocean, and high-energy cosmic rays hitting you right now every second of every day. Radiation is natural and omnipresent, and delivers a small yearly dose to all of us, depending on the location. This value, by the way, is actually 12 times what I got after spending a week in Chernobyl. Combine the fact that all of us are being constantly irradiated by natural sources with the sad fact that almost half of us will develop some kind of cancer during our lifetimes, and I think you can begin to see why it would be very difficult to tease out small health effects from low-level ionizing radiation. And this is where the controversy comes in. There are three different schools of thought on the health effects of low-level radiation. The first and most used by governments and regulators around the world is the so-called linear no-threshold model, which holds that any amount of radiation extrapolated all the way down to zero will have health effects. The second is the threshold model, which takes into account the seemingly obvious fact that we are being constantly irradiated by natural sources, without obvious consequence. It's only when you hit a certain dose threshold, the model contends, usually around 100 millisieverts, that clear, non-random health effects appear. The third model is the hormesis model, which holds that because the body activates certain repair mechanisms after irradiation, a small dose might actually have beneficial health effects, sort of like how calorie restriction can activate some desirable effects of the body's survival mode. Now, if we're trying to make sense out of Fallout's ghouls, beings that can actually be healed by radiation Hormesis, if true, there's still a lot of controversy around the model, makes the most sense and would make you more of a ghoul than you think. I think we've already done a more than decent job offering up explanations for the ghoul today, but my last ghoulish comparison has got to be my favorite. Just like New Vegas is everyone's favorite Fallout game. Ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, baby. Radiation doesn't just heal the Fallout ghoul, it feeds them. Now, this sounds very far-fetched at first, but consider what plants do. They use sunlight to break chemical bonds and make food for themselves during photosynthesis. The only difference between photons coming from the sun and photons coming out of cesium-137, for example, is energy. So is it really any surprise that in a place like Chernobyl, nature figured out a different kind of photosynthesis? In 2004, scientists reported that fungi in the grossly contaminated Chernobyl exclusion zone were doing something weird. They were growing towards sources of radiation like dangerous hot particles and not away. Further study demonstrated that other fungi would accumulate biomass faster with a background rate of radiation 500 times higher than normal. What exactly the fungi are doing here isn't yet clear, but it seems plausible that radiation is helping the organisms metabolize radiation into energy, just like plants do with another kind of radiation, sunlight. I think you can see where I'm going with this. If fallout ghouls actually feed off of radiation, well maybe they have been mutated to the point of radiosynthesis. They have become radiotrophic, just like some fungi in Chernobyl. <laughs> That's me. Now, taking everything we've talked about together today, how sciency is ghoulification? Well, I think it's pretty sciency. Do I actually think that a massive dose of radiation could make you a skinless, immortal, radiation feeding zombie man? No, not at all. But there are girdles of truth here, things to learn, and it's all more fun and more interesting than exploring a hundred accurately barren planets for no reason. Until next time. Now exiting the facility.
Thanks again to Copilot for sponsoring today's video. Go to my link in the description or this URL to get 14 days of free personalized fitness. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. If you want to join us here at the facility, if you want to get inside the blast doors, drape on a silky white lab coat, get videos early, join our private Discord where you can ping me at 2 in the morning. Thanks, Europe. And get your name on Aria here in every single video. That's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. <laughs> Look, there's hundreds and hundreds of you. What am I supposed to do now to pass the time? You know, a lot of people have this idea in their head, for whatever reason, I'd have to track it down, that roaches are gonna be the only thing that survives nuclear apocalypse. But there's actually many more organisms that are more radio resistant than cockroaches. And it kind of scales with how complex an organism is. The larger they are, the more complicated they are, like you, you have trillions and trillions of cells, the more opportunities for radiation to damage some of those cells. So when you get smaller and smaller, less complicated, you're more radio resistant. And there are more radio resistant insects, in fact, than rad roaches, like flower beetles. So in the apocalypse, Twinkies, rad roaches, flower beetles, and me probably. Thanks.